talk about porting Go. Uh, we'll look a little bit of, at Go internals and uh, how we ported Go to Solaris. Right, so I'm, I worked on some kernels, the Solaris kernel. Uh, I also did a little bit of Windows kernel stuff. Uh, of course, I like Go. Uh, so uh, I, I, get, I suppose uh, most people will not have the opportunity to port Go uh, in general because there are only so many platforms to port it to. But uh, uh, the knowledge you get by doing this, I think, is very valuable, uh, and I think it's interesting. So yeah, sure. Why, why, why shouldn't you port Go? I mean, uh, monoculture is bad. So if, if Go is ported to as many platforms as possible, it can only be uh, good for Go. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, porting Go gives you a, a, a massive learning opportunity to, to learn about its internals, which is a, a very useful thing, uh, even if you work uh, at the higher level. I mean, you, you don't have to. Uh, uh, dive into the runtime and, and, and you, you can just use Go, but Go provides you with some abstractions. Uh, and I think it's very valuable to understand uh, how these abstractions work. Because I, I don't think that abstractions are black boxes. Abstractions are very useful because they allow you to work at some level that, that you, you like working in. But uh <coughs> I think it's crucial uh, to understand these abstractions. Uh, in order to write software that can really understand, can really understand the impact it has. Uh, you can really understand what it does uh, at the operating system level. Uh, right. Uh, anyway, I think uh, porting uh, is also a way to improve Go. Uh, various platforms uh, exhibit various bugs or trigger various bugs. Uh, we, we, find, we found some bugs uh, were doing the, the Solaris port, for example. Uh, the, of course, personally, I did this port because I wanted to use D-Trace uh, on, on, on it, and D-Trace works best in Solaris. <coughs> There's a port of D-Trace in, uh, in FreeBSD. Uh, it, it's, I guess it's a few years back if, uh, behind Solaris, and uh, there's a port in OSX as well, um, which uh, started working. It, it, it was ported in, in uh, 10.5. It worked reasonably <coughs> well. Uh, then it was kind of forgotten. Now it's starting to work well as well. But um, <coughs> previously, uh, D-Trace on, on OS X was not very useful, I'd say. Also, uh, there are lots of 32-bit uh, uh, embedded pla uh, microcontrollers wh which you, in principle, could run Go on. Uh, Go won't work on 60-bit platforms, but there are lots of 32-bit uh, microcontrollers, and uh, you can make it work, I suppose. Also, I know some sysadmins uh, like uh, uh, writing Go tools to simplify their life, and uh, if, if you use a <coughs> less used operating system, you just, you're going to make your life better, I suppose. Of course, porting Go is extremely fun if you're into low-level things. Um, we're going to take a look at how uh, things are organized inside the Go tree, just to have a basic high-level overview. I mean, uh, you need to know where everything is and where everything goes, so, um, of course, um, uh, you probably know already, um, Of course, you know already where the the the. Not this one. Of course, since you probably built Go from source, you'll know uh, know these things already. Uh, I think that only all dot bash is documented. Uh, you need to be aware of uh, make make dot bash primarily because all dot bash invokes make dot bash part part of its build process. And um, since you won't be able to run <coughs> tests, 
and since you will want to cross compile it all times uh, you will need to run make dot bash I suppose so Dave Cheney wrote uh, a nice description that explains how, how the, all this works uh, and I encourage you to read it uh, and and play with the tools um, basically when you type make dot bash uh, there's a very simple C program that gets built it's the dist tool um, you can find in here there's a readme you should read it uh, the dist tool is 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 a very simple C program uh, it's really portable all the OS level stuff is concentrated in one file it's very simple so it can be built by just doing CC uh, star dot C and it, it should uh, build it correctly um, it's really simple C as I was saying this uh, does the the initial bootstrap uh, it knows how to build some things like uh, it knows how to build the go tool it knows how to build the runtime uh, this is useful because uh, uh, it also I'll just show you I suppose building the runtime in, in when building the runtime there are some um, files which will be auto generated so you need to know how to use this manually in order to auto generate these files uh, Otherwise, you know, pure Go packages are really easy to build using just the, the, the compiler. And But uh, you really want to use this um, to, you really want to use this actually, so, right. Of course, I, I assume you are already aware of build, build constraints and how different files uh, get built. Um, to recap, if a file ends in uh, underscore Linux it will only build it will only be built for Linux uh, you can also put this at the beginning of your file uh, and uh, well, this is a better example and then then it will be built only for, for Linux or Darwin this is useful because you have like a, a portable Unix files that uh, just uh, disable uh, Windows and plan 9 and you you know you, you put everything you want there uh, this is very this is documented so I won't insist on it much and I suppose any uh, you already know this stuff uh, eventually, uh, CMD dist will build the, the the Go tool, which you are already familiar with, and the Go tool um, can can build everything else. And the Go tool is really uh, interesting because uh, it's essentially a, a cross build tool. It always cross compiles, so your Go tool uh, runs on on your machine, but it can produce uh, binaries for for everything else. You should really take a look at uh, uh, all, all, all these files, and uh, you know have have a high high level overview of how how these things are organized, and uh, try for once not running make dot bash. Make dot bash uh, has a flag. I think it's only a dist only or dist tool. I think uh, which will only build a dist tool, and yeah, you should try just using the dist tool manually to build the runtime, the go tool, and then use the go tool uh, to get familiar with, with, with these things. Uh, right, this is, uh, I just wanted to show you this, how, how, how go is built, which I already talked already. Um, so the, the this tool is is built. As you can see, it's you know it's trivial. Uh, this is the flag that I was talking about. So you can you can make it stop here. This is very useful uh, because uh, uh, as you will be doing your port, uh, things won't won't work. This will be the first thing that will will work. So it's useful to to be able to stop the processes at the, at this point. So uh, if, if you take a look at this, you you will see that. Uh, uh, Essentially, when you are cross compiling, uh, first you build a set of tools and uh, packages for the for the local system in order to be able to compile the Go tool, which will run on, on the local system. 
and then you will uh, build uh, everything for uh, your your target operating system uh, as well. Uh, one note: this, the I suppose I will talk about this later. Uh, this will build the Go tool. Uh, it builds a Go Bootstrap binary. It's the regular Go tool with network networking pulled out. Uh, in order to uh, this knows the de internal details about packages. Uh, for example, the, the Go tool itself can do um, can infer dependencies between packages and things like that, but this c cannot. So, uh, this has a, a, a list of things it needs to do, so it needs to be told what to build. And so, of course, we don't need networking to build Go Bootstrap, so networking has lots of dependencies. So, we just take that out. Uh, by the way, we, we use uh, uh, build tags to, to I, I think, to make this work. So, uh, the compilers. The compilers uh, are, they actually come from, from Inferno and they come from, from Plan 9. Uh, they're very simple compilers. I mean, I think they're like uh, 30,000 lines of code, I suppose. Uh, currently, they're written in C. Uh, they will be, I, uh, the Go compiler, I suppose, will be rewritten re 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 in Go. Um, the there are some documents that describe the high level structure of these tools, and you should read them. Uh, mainly the the Ken Thompson and uh, paper, and Rob Pike also wrote a paper. Uh, these are very old, and uh, details have changed, but uh, they give you the necessary background to to work on these things. Uh, anyway, you you won't be you you won't be changing anything in the compilers, but you have to be somewhat aware of, of how things are, are are organized. Of course, the Go compilers. There's no <laughs> documents about those, but um, they work pretty much the same way. Uh, yeah, so they are always cross compilers. Uh, they are uh, again currently this this is this, uh, these details will change. Uh, each compiler generates code for one particular architecture, uh, and the code does not depend. Well, <laughs> it used to not depend on the target operating system. Uh, this changed very recently. Uh, with still, I don't. I don't think it's a, a real dependency, but uh, this will will change uh, because uh, the, the parts of the linker will get integrated in the compiler. Uh, but the the interesting thing, the, the thing you, ne you need to know is that they are always cross compiled, cross, cross compiled basically. And when I say they generate plain object files, it's uh, it's it's not not in not entirely true. I mean, it's, uh, things things change. Things are in a state of flux always. So, so the compilers compile uh, the C compilers uh, compile something that uh, looks like C. Uh, there are some small extensions which are described in those papers, uh, so I won't, won't talk about them because they don't matter much. Uh, but one which is important is the Ixton register storage class. Uh, I will talk about this a little bit later. Originally, this storage class um, made a... a Variables which which were extern register, they were in a per per CPU uh, a register, so it it was it wasn't a global. It was a per CPU, which was really important. Right, right now, the details are. I, I will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, yeah, there are some plans how 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 things are going to change, and I encourage you to read them. Um, provided a link. The assemblers are really, really, really simple programs. Uh, until very recently, there was no document that described uh, what's happening in, in, in Go. There is the original Plan 9 document, but the, it, it is quite obsolete. For example, I think it uh, describes a different calling convention and a uh, lot of stuff missing. Um, but now we do have a guide. Uh, again, I encourage you to read it. Uh, So, the calling convention. Uh, the the assemblers provide 
uh, an, 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 an abstraction of, of frame pointers, but in the actual code there are no real frame pointers. Uh, everything is stack based. You you pass things on the stack. Um, the for for Go, uh, the return values are also on the stack. The the C C compiles return in AX. This is important when um, writing functions that are to be called writing C functions that are to be called from Go or uh, uh, vice versa. Uh, this is just a quick overview. You should really read the document I mentioned earlier. Uh, and also, you should you should play with this with, with this thing because you, you will be doing the same programming. So, pack is just a, a variant of uh, R. Uh, it packages uh, object files into an archive, which the linker then uses. Uh, I mention it here because uh, you will want to manually use pack in order to uh, extract and insert your own symbols in the archives. Um, Linkers, again, they are described to some some degree in in the compiler paper. Um, <coughs> they they can generate different kind of binaries. Um, for example, A out L, of course, B. Um, yeah, somewhat surprisingly, the linkers uh, implement uh, they they do code generation. Uh, they do some op some they do dead code elimination for example as an optimi optimization which is I suppose surprisingly surprising um, and they also implement split stacks uh, we will talk about how split stacks are implemented later once we know more about the runtime but it's important to remember that the linkers will insert code uh, inside uh, whatever you write even if you write it in assembly they will they will modify that code uh, so if you really need to know about uh, the code that's uh, actually running, the linker has a, f a flag to, to uh, dump the assembly. Of the, yeah, the, the compiler also has a flag, but as I was saying, the linker rewrites this stuff, so you, you need to be aware of this distinction. Uh, there's, a, there's a document, I didn't reference it here, in, inside the... Um, I think it's inside runtime, I think. That describes how CGO works. Uh, it does, it's, it's important to know how CGO works. Well, dep depending on operating system, it might or might not be important to know how CGO works. Uh, the, the important detail here is that uh, some time ago, uh, support was added for external linking. That means that the, the Go linker uh, will, will link uh, an, an elf, for example, object file, uh, which will will then be linked by the system linker. Uh, why was this? Why is this useful? Um, elf is very complex, and it supports a, a wide range of uh, relocations. and uh, And the Go linker uh, doesn't did, <coughs> did not doesn't know about all, all this stuff. So we, we defer the work to the to the system linker. Uh, why I mention this right now is that. Uh, you must always make sure that uh, your port works both with the internal and the external linker. There's a there's an external flag when calling the linker. I will mention a little bit about how the uh, how external linking works um, later in this talk. So the go runtime. The go runtime um, implements a, a, a lots of things. Many we are not really interested in uh, because they are very portable. Uh, for example, garbage collection. Uh, you probably don't have to do anything to the garbage collector. Uh, so, I suppose I, I, I'd say half of, of the runtime code is, is portable, uh, and it runs on top of uh, things that are either architecture dependent or operating system dependent. Um, for example, uh, all, all the scheduling depends on uh, what primitives your operating system <coughs> exposes for, for, for doing uh, uh, scheduling stuff. Um, uh, 
uh, yeah, I suppose it's very unsurprising that every Go program, the, the entry point is inside the runtime because the runtime has to do a little bit of things. Um, I suppose we could... Uh, do this, I suppose. Right. So, the actual entry point is uh, depends on the operating system because um, they need to get the arguments to the program and that that detail depends on the operating system um, but so here is the real en real entry point uh, which we'll just call rt0 go which we'll take a look a bit later Uh, right. Yeah. Right now, it's written in C assembly and Go uh, as part of getting rid of C and in making everything in Go. I su suppose most C will uh, get rewritten into Go, and some C will get rewritten into assembly because you you really need assembly in the end. So, so obviously, the runtime has to do system calls. Uh, Go has general you, you regular programs have to do system calls as well but this this is implemented differently uh the runtime must do some some basic system calls like for example uh, the the thread creation stuff the, the synchronization the signaling stuff uh, and for 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 most platforms the mechanism by which runtime and syscall are doing this are the same, but for some platforms are different. For example, in Windows and Solaris, it's, it's quite different. Right, so um, because Go on most <coughs> platforms uh, does system calls manually uh, without relying on libc or anything else, uh, they are written in, in assembly. But um, of course, in, in, in Windows and Solaris, uh, the, the, that ABI is not stable, so uh, they need to do something else, which we will take a look later. Right. So, when doing your port, uh, you have to have some awareness of how scheduling works and how uh, Gorontians are multiplexes on, on threads. Um, Daniel Morsing wor uh, wrote something about this. Uh, you should read that. Uh, what's, what's really important is that um, run the runtime, uh, each, each Gorontian and each thread have an uh, associated resource, which is called uh, a G N and M. M stands for machine. G stands, I suppose, I'm sorry, machine. G stands for Gortin. Um, and uh, many Gs are multiplexed uh, on, onto an M. Um, uh, some, I think, about a year ago, uh, Ps were introduced, so Ms that run Go code have to acquire Ps. That's uh, when, when debugging, uh, you, sh you should be aware of these things, but the most important thing that you, you should be aware of is. Uh, how the runtime uses GNM specifically, uh, and how the runtime accesses GNM. Uh, details vary between pla uh, between uh, platforms, of course. Um. Right. So um, we'll skip this, I suppose. Uh, yeah, you you need to be aware that uh, uh, right right now the runtime is uh, not preemptive. Uh, there was some work that made it that added more preemption points, but it's not preempted. I mean, it's uh, it's voluntary preemption. Uh, of course, th this can change any time. Um, right. Okay. So go. Uh, uses segmented stacks, and you need to be aware of, of this for uh, for a few reasons. Uh, it it usually means that uh, when when you're doing assembly or C, um, 
you, you really need to know if your function is able to split the stack or not. Um, in practice, for, for GC, you have 120 <coughs> bytes of stack available. If you really want to write a function that you are, that you are sure that we will not split the stack. Um, just an example, in GCC, uh, I think it's about 1K. So it's, it, there's a huge difference there. The way segmented stacks are implemented is that uh, at each uh, function entry, uh, the function itself checks if it needs to, uh, if it needs a different stack segment. And of course, that means that uh, how, can, how can it know that it needs a new stack segment? So it does look inside G uh, to look for look for the stack guard. So it uses G to look for the stack guard. Uh, and, and this way, it, it can know if it needs to allocate a new stack segment or not. Stack guard is also used uh, uh, for forcing, for forcing a, 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 a new uh, schedule event. Uh, I think there's a thread inside the runtime that uh, checks uh, if each Gordian exceeded its quantum and then uh, it can uh, update the stack guard. So uh, it will trigger this check and this check uh, then uh, we'll, we'll see if, if it just wants to grow the stack or if it needs to be preempted. Um, so this means that uh, at each function entry, uh, entry uh, it, 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 needs to, it, it needs a way to, to find G which uh, depends on the system. So uh, I, I was telling you earlier that the compiler produces uh, code independent of the target operating system. So I suppose this was never really true because the, the details about how to access this stuff vary between systems. And uh, the dish tool I was initially talking about Will will generate some uh, will generate the code that that tells uh, how to access stuff. So this this varies a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, I believe in go one one dot three or some sometime in the future uh, there will be contiguous stacks uh, or I'd rather call them moving stacks. Stacks start up small, uh, but when when there's a need for uh, Growing the stack, the the previous stack segment is, is is copied into a larger stack segment, and uh, the function uh, return address is uh, modified accordingly. So this depends on the precise garbage collection because uh, we need to uh, change every point, all the, all the pointers uh, in, in the stack that were previously there. So we need we need type information to do that. We can't just consider everything a potential pointer. Um, Go wants to own the signals. Uh, this is, I suppose, the primary problem. With there, are, there are various people who want Go to run as a shared uh, share library. But uh, the reality is that Go uh, really needs to own the, the, the signals. Uh, so, so the runtime calls the necessary operating system functions that do signal stuff. Uh, and it implements an, an abstraction so you can get uh, a, a much nicer interface. Uh, the, 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 signal the, signaling, uh, the signaling stuff hap happens on a separate stack, the G signal. Uh, se sorry, yeah, it uses the G signal. Uh, that's because, for example, in Unix, you can uh, uh, set up an alternate stack for for uh, alternate stack for for signal handling uh, and and go use that I think I think G signal is 32k it's it's one G signal per M uh, uh, right so so the runtime can can look at the state of the go by the pro go program and uh, it can generate stack traces. Of course, you know you you notice that in panics. 
uh, but it's also used in uh, in profiling uh, because well, profiling works by um, integrating uh, signals, I think SIGPROF, with uh, the ability to to look inside the state. Uh, yeah, the runtime does some more things, like uh, I was saying, the dead log detector and the raise detector implemented in the runtime, but um, uh, those are not really relevant for, 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 for this talk, and you, you that, these are fairly portable things. So. Uh, yeah, time, the, yeah, this, this is not very important either. <coughs> so, um, outside the runtime, the, the syscall package uh, provides a, an interface to the operating system. And of course, it varies between systems. Uh, however, there's some commonality uh, on Unix. So this is really useful because, for example, the OS package uh, kind of can use syscall, can, can, have, can have the same, same implementation for all Unixes. Uh, but of course, some, some details vary. For example, the networking, uh, uh, the, the network polar stuff depends highly on on the on the system. So uh, the it, it it's written in, in Go in assembly. There are Go functions, which about half of them are auto generated by a Perl script. Uh, and and these functions just call the uh, uh, usually they call an in the indirect system call. Um, they, the Perl script also generates uh, constants and uh, things like that, so we can know the trap numbers for the indirect system call. Uh, what's really important here is there is a syscall and the raw syscall, if you really look at the syscall package. The difference is that uh, a regular syscall will inform the runtime that there's a syscall going on in order to potentially allocate uh, a thread one more thread, so it will not it will not block uh, the the whole program. Uh, raw syscall doesn't do that, uh, which is useful for uh, non-blocking syscalls uh, and things like that. Um, the th this distinction between uh, uh, in in integer types and unsafe pointers will be more relevant as the garbage mm -hmm. uh, collector will become more precise. Uh, I'm not really sure if if the syscall uh, code right now uh, is uses this correctly. I think it might use uh, integer in integers um, uh, without having a reference to an unsafe pointer, but I'm not really sure. So the 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 Perl the Perl stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a it's it's a it's a Perl script. Um, uh, they are two, three variants now. There's also one for, for uh, Windows. It looks inside the host uh, headers uh, to, to get up the constants and generate the types and uh, all, all the things. Uh, you sort of can use it as a cross tool. Uh, it's a little bit trickier because you will have to provide all those headers and you will probably have to modify things in order to use those headers, but uh, you you can do it. Uh, and this is really important if you can't get a CGO tool running on your target <coughs> operating system. What's really important here is that uh, most most operating systems uh, have in libc, uh, they, they expose the kernel interface, but it's really a, sh a shim. Uh, and they do some, some translation there. So, so they for example, the trap numbers uh, exposed by libc might be fake, so you really need the as you are avoiding libc and you only interact with the kernel, you re you really need the, the the kernel stuff. So uh, on on some on some systems you you use you need to use the kernel headers. Uh, so Unix and Plan Nine calls the indirect system call. Actually, there are three indirect system calls depending on the number of parameters you use. Uh, using the stuff they they we generated previously, uh, this this can this is okay because the the, the system call uh, interface is, is stable on most systems. Uh, Darwin is an exception. Uh, 
it's it's not officially stable and sometimes breaks but um, uh, for example Linux is stable uh, there are some some things that uh, you lose by doing this or I don't know if you lose but uh, you have to be aware of for example on most systems when uh, you do thread local storage uh, it's really a dance between libc and the kernel uh, so if if that's the case and you don't have libc that means that uh, you don't really have tls in the normal sense uh, so that means that if you want to use uh, thread local storage for uh, gnm you need to implement this stuff or your own uh, I think most systems there's a there are system calls that uh, you can use to to do this stuff on the road. I mean of course libc has has to have a way to do this thing uh, on on some systems this this uh, this this mechanism is, is is portable and some it's not so um, you have to be aware of that yeah uh, windows uh, uh, of course this would be so hilarious here. Uh, in in Windows and and Solaris, the system call interface is not stable. Uh, actually, in Windows, it's pretty stable. In Solaris, it's really it is not stable. Uh, some s for we I don't I don't think Windows Windows has this, but Solaris does have a indirect system call. Uh, but you can't use it because the trap numbers will change between versions. So you 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 can't do the indirect system call. You have to use libc. Uh, we will take a look at how this is done. Basically, uses some CGO stuff. Uh, it's not CGO per se, as you regularly use CGO in Go. It's just some some internal details that that are used in here. Uh, so, how this this works? For example, if you really want to use uh, symbols that are defined in in a C object. Uh, you you ask for the symbols, uh, and and then the the generated generated machine code has to use those symbols in a way that the cold code expects them to be used. Um, the I'm I'm basically talking about the the relocation mechanism here. Uh, in the most general case, elf relocations are really complicated. Um, so, in the most general case, you need to have uh, access to uh, every object that you will be using in order to uh, generate the most optimal relocation. Uh, this is this is done when you when you use the external linker. Um, we uh, unfortunately. Uh, the external using the external linker means uh, there's no cross compiler there's no cross compilation support so we can't depend on uh, anything that that should be on the target system so mm, fortunately there are some elf relocations uh, that are that are we can do without having access to uh, uh, other objects unfortunately there are th those are the most uh, uh, slow ones uh, this is done by the runtime because the runtime really has to uh, have some access to to the system, but it really means that there's there can't be any lazy loading of function and things like that. So, uh, for example, the ports, Windows and Solaris uh, use some system calls like uh, the thread functions, uh, open read. They use this mechanism for 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 that, but. Uh, for all the others, they resort to uh, uh, deal open deal sim and basically lazy using those functions to lazy load uh, everything you might need. Because if you really uh, you go can can you can do 300 system calls, uh, you really don't want to to, to for the uh, dynamic loader to go through all this stuff and and generate code for everything except only when it's needed. Because in practice, you only need a, a small subset of system calls. Uh, as I was saying, in in the differences be between the, sys the system, the syscall and raw sys syscall, uh, a, sy a syscall uh, notifies the runtime by by doing uh, by calling enter syscall. This is the function defined in the, in the runtime package. 
so this is it does what you expect. Uh, it it put there uh, the G there are the G state transition is like uh, you know in in a regular operating system like the runnable uh, running uh, things like that. There's also a syscall state, um, and and when it's in this state, uh, it means that it owns the th the 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 thread it's running on. So the runtime might uh, allocate or might uh, might allocate more threads for for other things to run. Uh, there's a thread limit, I suppose. I think it's ten thousand threads right now. It's you can change it. Uh, there's a uh, something in the runtime like set max threads, I suppose. You can change that. Um, right. So so the network package. Um, for for example, the OS package, uh, the extraction Go provides is pretty close to what the operating system provides. You know, like uh, file descriptors and doing read and writes. So for 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 networking, is slightly higher up the stack. Um, of course, it uses Berkeley sockets and using Windows and something else on Plan Nine. Uh, you have to be aware of 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 the fact that uh, by default it wants to use CGO to do uh, name resolution. Uh, but you can disable that. Uh, but well, of course, one way is by disabling CGO. But if you're compiling natively, there's uh, and you still want CGO, there's some build type to disable that. Without CGO, it will resort doing DNS and uh, local uh, 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 queries for for this stuff. So it kind of works really. Uh, what what's more important here is is the how the network uh, mechanism works. So you uh, uh, you want to do you want to have a caller for networking because as i was saying you otherwise you'd have uh, a thread per each system call so for each connection you'd have a thread and if you you want to avoid that stuff so uh by doing io multiplexing of some sorts you can have uh, uh, a system where you only need as as many threads uh as uh, many people, many things do I/O at a time. So the way this works is by uh, uh, the, the network package doesn't do uh, read and writes and things like that. Um, it 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 calls the network polar, which is implemented in the runtime, uh, and the the polar will use uh, some mechanism, for example, uh, KQ or EPOL or things like that. Uh, in order to uh, to do I/O only only when it needs to. Uh, actually, this was I think this was previously done uh, uh, only in the ne network package, uh, but uh, it was moved inside the runtime because uh, because the polar knows which Gortin uh, needs to do I/O. It can be integrated with the scheduler so that it will schedule that particular Gortin. Uh, one note: the polar requires edge trigger I/O, so select is out. Right. So now moving on to actually porting Go. <laughs> so first you have to add a new Go S, and you know this is the easy stuff. Uh, add it inside CMD dist, uh, Go build. Uh, you know everywhere. You can basically grab for some other Go S and add it there. Uh, one note: There are two ways of doing this. Uh, you can start by cross compilation, uh, and always do cross co cross compilation. Basically, I, 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 we we didn't do that. Um, I I suppose <laughs> it's uh, for, for Go for for some other things. I suppose it it might makes more sense. But Go the dependencies it it has like the C the CGO the this tool is like a very small C program and. Uh, I think it's really worth it to do it uh, um, uh, natively. Uh, one more note: we we did this, and it paid a lot. Is to really use uh, the, the the stuff you're you're hacking on. I mean, before this, the Solaris port worked at all, uh, I used the same tree on my Linux and BSDs and every machine I had. So I always made sure I never broke the tree and never broke any kind of other assumption and 
Otherwise, it's, you will break things and you will not even know. Uh, and this is not hard to do at all, really. Right, so uh, right now, I've add uh, uh, your, your operating system wherever it's needed. I think right now it's needed in the compilers as well, because the compilers use uh, liblink, which is the linker stuff factored <laughs> out as a library. Um, but th this will take one hour, I suppose. Okay. Right now, so you really need to understand the, the binary uh, format you're, you're targeting. Uh, that means you should look at uh, objects using whatever tools you, you, you like. Uh, because uh, you need to understand the differences w w between what, what should be and what really happens. Um, so, you know, take a look at, I, I suppose most operating systems uh, will have a stable ABI and you will use, uh, uh, you will do system calls for each. So just use very small programs that don't use libc or for that system uh, and take a look at how they do, uh, uh, how they do, how, how, take a look at the object, uh, what, what relocations are inside, if, any, if how these things happen. Um, so, uh, when, when you're adding uh, stuff to the linker, uh, you can always grab for, for other systems. Uh, the linker is pretty hairy, I suppose. Uh, lots of ca special cases for lots of operating systems and things like that. You should, you should grab for uh, popular stuff like Linux and also non-popular non stuff because uh, Linux has all kind of special code make things faster, I suppose. Um, other systems don't. Oh, on the other hand, other systems do have special codes to do their thing, but you, you, you see why, why isn't Linux doing this thing as well? Uh, so you need to take a look at, at all of those. Um, and you need to be aware of what, what uh, your uh, system requires. Uh, okay. Some, 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 not some notes for, for Solaris. Um, there are no static binaries on Solaris. Um, I suppose it's to be expected since you are required to use libc. But when I mean there are not, there are no uh, static binaries. I mean they really don't. Uh, or 64B, they don't run at all. Uh, th th other systems may may be similar or not. Uh, so yeah, if you use ELF, I think you're pretty much covered. Uh, if you're, you don't use ELF. But if you use a dot out, you're pretty much covered as well. But otherwise, uh, you have to really, really be be aware of the binary formats. Um, the most, the f the first thing that you need to do is uh, write some hello world programs in assembly. Uh, th this will uh, accustom you to the, the the calling convention necessary, and uh, uh, you know you need to know how to do a system call. Uh, but but what's really important is that you need to do the same with uh, with the uh, Go assemblers as well. And uh, if when you try to do this, uh, you will have some problems uh, at first. For example, you link the runtime, which obviously doesn't work yet. Um, you can use uh, CMD pack to ex extract uh, the, the the startup object. And you can insert your own startup object, and essentially you 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 avoid the the runtime uh, completely. Of course, everything you do right now it has to be no, no, it has to not split the stack. There, there's this f flag that can be used uh, in the in the assembly, um, because if you split the stack, it will try to access the runtime, which doesn't work yet. There's no G, for example, right now. Um, once you have something working, you should do the same with I in C. Uh, you might need to disable dwarf. Uh, I know that we did need to disable dwarf for some time. I can't remember why, though. <coughs> right, so, so the, the, uh, the, the thing with C is that since uh, the C compilers uh, kind of use the, the same calling convention as, as the Go compilers, this is the place where you will learn to do the ABI translation between the calling convention of, of Go and uh, your target operating system. Uh, 
uh, and this is really just hello world level thing so this is really easy to to learn things at this level uh, so you should use pack to write to create an alternative runtime uh, we called ours alt uh, and you should create some some test infrastructure that uh, builds things using the, this this alt runtime uh, this will be very useful because you will r r can write uh, tests and uh, things like that and will be very useful in the future uh, as things break as well so as you uh, probably uh, w when you will try to uh, use the linker for the sim first time uh, nothing will work because all kind of symbols will be missing uh, so prob most signals that will be missing are inside uh, uh, the OS file, OS specific file, and all kind of symbols here. A and this file, uh, about half of it, I suppose, is uh, is really sort of common between systems. Uh, another half is not common at all. Uh, for now, you just you just need stubs. You don't need to do any kind of implementation in th this time. Uh, when you try to implement things, you should start with, uh, of course, obvious things like uh, file I/O. But then you need to decide, uh, you need to find out what's the best way of uh, creating kernel threads. Uh, Believe C usually exposes, you know, POSIX threads. Uh, but uh, you might not want to use POSIX threads. You might, you might want to use the, the, the actual native threads the kernel is using. Uh, for example, in, in Linux, um, the Go runtime uses the clone system call to create threads. Uh, there are similar calls for, for other systems. Uh, as a note, for Solaris, we do use POSIX threads <laughs> because we really are using uh, libc. Uh, Solaris has two kinds of threads. Uh, the po POSIX threads are a very uh, thin layer of native Solaris <coughs> threads. We decided to use POSIX threads because we might, uh, we thought it, it might be useful for other ports in the future. Uh, that doesn't really matter much. What what matters uh, the, the synchronization primitives uh, the operating system gives you in order to 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 do uh, synchronization between these threads. Uh, again, there are POSIX locks and things like that which you <coughs> might want to avoid. Uh, yeah. yeah. How far are you from this? Sorry. How far are you? Uh, I think I'm uh, about uh, uh, two thirds, but I think my time is out. I suppose <laughs> 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 about half. Yeah, oh well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but but I can stop. Yeah. Can, can you make the slides available? Somewhere yeah, sure. The sure. Obviously. I certainly, like you're the only person who's documented this process. Yeah. Surely. Surely. <laughs> so obviously. So that would be great. Yeah. Surely. Um, uh, I guess if you have questions for Aram, we should get you to ask them. Like. Well, that would require writing a Spark compiler, basically. Uh, oh, yes. th there is no plan, but I have no plan. Anyone can have plans. I don't know.